First, I will summarize the key concepts I introduced in my first presentation. Growth mixture models and latent class growth analysis are person-centered approaches that identify groups with distinctive developmental trajectories. And these models are based on probability, so they provide robust and transparent methods for classification of individuals into different groups. And the difference between the two methods is that growth uh, mixture models uh, allow intra-group variation in the growth parameters, whereas latent class growth analysis doesn't allow any variation in the growth parameters of the individuals within one class. And I also emphasize the importance of exerting some judgment in selecting the models that can represent variation in trajectories of variables we observe across individuals. In this second presentation, I will give a more formal introduction and outline of the trajectory-based uh, group models. And I will make the case for looking at uh, categorical outcomes for, and categorical variables, uh, introducing some of the key concepts that allow us to work with this type of variables. I will then talk about how I, we can interpret the, uh, the parameters and how we can plot trajectories both for growth mixture models and latent class growth analysis. So I will focus on categorical variables because when we are studying issues such as drug use or mental health, often we deal with variables that are all that categorical. In the example I provided here, the question about low mood has category of responses that are not evenly spaced and are uh, ordered categorical. This means that we cannot apply models that have been developed for continuous outcomes and models that uh, often have prescriptive assumptions about the distribution of residuals. So I will take as an example a variable uh, like antisocial behavior that I labeled A, where A can take five ordered values from zero to four, but these values are not evenly spaced. In a similar case, we can use a logit link mo to model the association between the probability of the variable taking uh, a category of response, for example, two or higher, versus the probability of the variable assuming a lower category of, uh, in, in the response. Uh, this ratio between the two probabilities represents the odds of variable A being in category A two or higher versus the probability of a lower category. And by calculating the logarithm of these odds, we give to this outcome a symmetric distribution, which, allow us, which allows us to model the outcome as a linear function of covariate x. In categorical outcomes as a function of covariates is facilitated further by a latent response formulation. Uh, in this case, the categorical outcome is considered a rough categorization of an underlying, underlying latent response, as you can see in this graph I produced here. Uh, this continuous underlying response that you see in blue is divided into different categories by thresholds, which are cut points that divide the latent underlying response into the different categories you see represented in green in the graph. The frequency of frequency of the categories depends on where we cut the latent response. And we call this latent response Y star. And depending on the value of the underlying Y star value of an individual, the individual will have a corresponding categorical score. So for example, if Y star is less than the first threshold, the value of the observed categorical variable for that individual will be zero. So in this way, we can express the latent response Y star as a function of different covariates, covariates in a formula that is similar to a standard regression model that we are more familiar with. So the equation where the latent response Y star is a function of covariates in an equation that is very similar to a standard regression can also be expanded to uh, and be applied uh, in order to define a growth model for categorical variables. 
So here uh, I am considering data and response y star at time t uh, for individual i as a linear function of the individual's intercept, which I call b0 here, and as a function of the individual's slope b1 here that represents the amount of change in the outcome by unit of time. We also have an epsilon term here that represents variability in the individual's score at time t, but this epsilon ti uh, term has a fixed mean and a variance, so I will not uh, consider it. So individual i has have uh, their own inter intercept is zero and slope b1, as you can see here. But how are these terms defined? The individual intercept is the sum of the sample's average intercept, g0, plus the individual variation above or below this average, u0. Um, similarly, the individual slope, uh, it's the sum of the average, a sample average slope, plus the uh, variation of individual i above or below this average slope, uh, so here represented by u1. So if we put all this together, we have this equation here, where the variation around the sample average intercept and the sample average slope are supposed to be normally distributed with mean zero and variance psi, which is the covariance matrix of the two individual use. So the two terms that I have highlighted here in blue represent the sample average intercept plus the individual's i variation above or below the sample average. Whereas the other two terms here uh, I highlighted in blue represent the sample average slope and the individual's variation above or below this slope. When we are defining a growth model for, for a categorical variable, the scale of the underlying latent variable y star is arbitrary. So to obtain a point where we can anchor the distribution, we fix the intercept to zero. So the equation to estimate y star at time t for the individual uh, is even simpler because one, the average intercept is fixed to zero. And it's important here to uh, mention a, a a key assumption of this uh, model, and that's the assumption of proportional odds. This says that the effects of covariates on the odds of an individual being one category is the same for all the categories, which allows us to have a single coefficient to represent the association between covariate and ordinal outcome. And another assumption when we apply this model uh, to growth modeling uh, assumes that the thresholds that cut the underlying latent variable are constant, constant across time. So the cut points that define the categories of response in the categorical variable we observe are the same across time or across age. So in this graph, I have plotted fresh for the thresholds of a fictional variable A, antisocial behavior, and these thresholds are the same across time, as you can see. So if someone scores zero, for example, uh, here, uh, in the latent variable Y star, uh, they will be in category two of the categorical ordinal variable we observe. So we center time at time point one so that the different time points are zero, one, and so on. And if we estimated that the sample average uh, slope G1 is equal to 0.18, using the equation here, we can plot the sample average trajectory by multiplying the slope coefficient by the center time variable, so that the sample average trajectory will be zero at time zero, uh, 0.15 at time one, 0.30 at time two, and so on. So using the formula here, the equation here, we can calculate the average trajectory of 
individuals in this sample once we know this parameter G1, which is the average slope. So this sample average trajectory will look something like this. Uh, you see here represented in black. And we can see that on average individuals uh, move from category two of the variable to category three at the last uh, point, uh, the last measurement occasion of the study. And using the same equation, we can also estimate each individual's variation around the sample average, intercept, and slope. And if the variation around the insert, intercept for individual i is 0 0.050, uh, for example, here, and the variation around the slope is 0.14, we can then use these parameters to estimate the individual's i's values of y star at each time point as I show here. So using the equation and using these parameters here, I can calculate that the value of y star for individual i at time point zero will be point zero fifty and so on. And here in the graph you see that I've uh, plotted the individual i trajectory in red. And we can see that individual I moved from being in a category two of the ordinal variable self to being category four by the end of the study. The same model can be represented in this way where we have the latent variables uh, that represent the intercept and the slope uh, and the uh, the, and that explains the change in the observed uh, categorical, ca uh, categorical variable. So the intercept G0 is represented here, and the sample average slope G1 is conceptualized as a latent variable. They influence the observed categorical outcomes. Uh, the variance uh, U0 and U1 around these samples average parameters represent individual var variation above or below this average and uh, as described earlier, they are supposed to be distributed normally uh, with variance representing the covariance matrix. If we wanted to define a trajectory that is not linear but uh, can accelerate or decelerate over time, uh, we, can, we should consider further slope here, G2, which is multiplied by the square of time to define patterns of acceleration and deceleration. So a similar model could create a trajectory, as you can see represented here. Uh, it is also possible to model individual variation around this quadratic term uh, or this quadratic slope that, so that each individual would have different quadratic uh, trajectories. In the exercises I provided with this uh, material, there is an example of quadratic growth that you can use. So we can extend the growth model I presented uh, to model different trajectory groups uh, and, for example, run a growth mixture model. In this case, in this case, I also assume that there is a latent class uh, variable, a latent, a farther latent variable that is categorical, uh, and latent class affiliation affects the average intercept and slope of the individuals within one class, within each class. Furthermore, within each class, uh, individuals vary around these class-specific trajectories, which means that within each class, individuals still show their own trajectories. And to represent this model, uh, we index the parameters of the equation I presented before, and you see here, by latent class indicator K. When we are modeling a uh, growth mixture analysis, we assume that the thresholds that cut the underlying latent response Y star are invariant across time, but also invariant across classes. So each class will have the same thresholds. And therefore, again, we can represent these thresholds in a, uh, in a graph uh, like this, where the thresholds remain constant across time and will be the same for each latent class that we estimate. Because the scale of the underlying y star variable is arbitrary, 
we fix the average intercept of one of the classes to be zero, leaving the intraclass average intercept of other classes to be estimated freely. In M plus, for example, the intercept of the last latent class estimated is fixed to zero by default. Once we estimated the intercept and the slope parameters for different classes, we can calculate the Y star scores for the average sample in class one at time zero, uh, one, and so on, as well as the, the values of Y star uh, for those uh, that are in latent class two. And in here, you can see that given the parameters uh, that are specific to each class, I can calculate the uh, y star values for in, an average individual in latent class one. And given the parameters for latent class two, I can calculate the average values of y star for in, the individual in latent class two. And once uh, I plot this, uh, these trajectories, they will look something like this, where we can see that whereas in the average individual in latent class one and in latent class two start at similar levels, those in latent class one uh, end up in to be more likely to be in, uh, in class, uh, in category three of the variable A, whereas those in latent class two follow a different trajectory. However, there is individual variation within classes when we apply growth mixture models. So we can estimate individual variation and calculate the uh, scores for an individual in latent class two, uh, for example, and plot them, as, plot them as I did here. So once we know the parameters that pertain to the, to the individual, we can calculate the expected a trajectory of an individual in latent class two. And as you can see, uh, they even within a latent class uh, here, individuals have their own expected trajectories that follow a general class specific pattern, but with some variation. Um, and it's important also to uh, remember that these are expected trajectories uh, for uh, average individuals in one class and for the individual uh, within one class, where the actual observed trajectory of the individual will be, will be different to what we expect due to measurement error. A measurement error vary, and it is, it is important to consider the size of residuals when we compare different models. The latent class growth analysis model is less complex because we assume no individual variation around the intraclass average growth parameters. So individuals within a class are supposed to all follow the same trajectory. So those are the parameters that we had in uh, the growth mixture models are fixed to zero. When we apply latent class growth analysis, uh, we also are working with the same assumptions as growth mixture models. So we assume that the thresholds uh, that cut the underlying the, uh, response Y star are the same across time and across latent classes. And we can, by estimating the parameters that are class specific, uh, so the uh, intercept and the slope of each latent class, then we can plot uh, the expected trajectory of individuals within each class. But because we are not assuming uh, there is variation across individuals within each class, then we are, the, each individual is supposed to follow the same trajectory uh, of that class. Uh, and the only differences are due to measurement error. So there is no individual specific trajectory uh, in a latent class growth analysis, unlike in growth mixture models. So in this uh, presentation, I've uh, de demonstrated how we can apply uh, growth models uh, to categorical outcomes, uh, talking about uh, the logit link function and the latent response uh, formulation. And I've also expanded this uh, to show how growth parameters uh, are then indexed by latent classes in growth mixture uh, models and latent class growth analysis. Um, I've emphasized again that the key difference between the two models is that growth mixture models allow 
variation uh, around the average intra-class uh, trajectories, whereas latent class growth analysis assumes that all the individuals within that class will follow the same trajectory, save for measurement error. So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, in the exercises I provided with uh, these results, I will also, there are also examples of uh, different growth mixture models and latent class uh, growth analysis applied to real data. Uh, so if you're interested, look at that. Thank you very much. Bye.